Really well done. And, yeah. and I wish you all could have seen these two guys watching that. And, and, and mm -hmm. I, I was fascinated by your reaction to it. One guy's going one, one way, way, one guy's. So talk about that. Tell me why that's so challenging. Well, when you when you have, they get down there in that area. They play that little Reggie Miller game where they're dancing, where you know Steph wants to go off to the right, and you're trying to force him to go to the left. But you can't really help too much because you have another shooter that's also doing a dance trying to get to his dominant side. So they complement each other in a way that is so difficult to guard because they're both dominant on both sides of the wing that you can't shade help one way or the other. On an average, Steph and Clay run 1.8 miles per game. 1.8 miles per game. Have you ever seen a grammar school game where you just see a little kid just running around like a chicken with his head cut off? <laughs> like, that's what Steph is on the court, but he's brilliant with the high basketball IQ. So when there's random screens for him and they keep working from side angles, that's where they get all those slips, those easy dunks, because they continue and, to keep and, the floor space. And when they talk about complimenting each other, they set screens for each other. Yeah. So when they're off ball and Draymond might have the ball on the right side, you have Steph trying to set a screen for Clay, just causes more confusion for both of them. And I like that stat that we put up there. So they've averaged 58 and a half points a game, the two of them combined, basically since KD went out. That, yeah. That's essentially what that statistic means. It is my contention they will have to score 60 points a game to win this series. I, I believe Steph and Clay, and I think they'll do it, yeah. but I think they need 60 a game from those two guys combined in order to win. And, and that's that's a right on par with who they are. I think Steph is going to be 30-plus or in that range, and I think Clay, we've seen him go for big numbers, 40-point games. So I think Clay on any given night can be between 20 and 35 points. I would disagree with you. Why? Before KD, Steph and Clay averaged more points in NBA final losses than they did in wins. I think the word is efficiency. I think those guys have to be efficient with the way they score because when they're efficient and when they get going, that opens up the floor. That means that other players are being able – They like, had – The complementary pieces have to bring value to the but table But it's similar well. to Kawhi. When, when Kawhi is so efficient, when the Splash Brothers are efficient – it, it, they're unbeatable. Like, that's really? the thing. That's what makes them very, very good and dominant. Is that if those two guys have an efficient night with the way they play defense and move the ball, they're almost impossible. Because Steph play. can get 30, but if he's if he's going, you know, 12 for 28, then it's not going to be the same. Those yeah. were different teams, though. I mean, those are teams that had more guys. They had to give up a lot of those guys when they brought in Kevin Durant. People forget that, but you would get 12 a game from Harrison Barnes mm -hmm. and other guys who aren't there anymore. If they don't get scoring from Steph and Clay, where is it coming from? Draymond will facilitate the offense, but if you've got to get to a 106 points to win a game here. Where else is it coming from? Well, and the thing that I like about the Warriors, and you've seen that with the comebacks that they made in the Portland series, is that all they need to do is be within five with a minute to go, and you have the two most dominant elite shooters in the game. By the way, I like how they font me as Greenberg. I think oh, that's right. really <laughs> official. It's, it's a font you as G. It's yeah. a G, I like Greenberg. That. One G. way or the other, I like it. Anyway, I want you to see this. Because on Planet Earth yesterday, I want you to check out Steve Kerr. This was during Warriors practice yesterday, and he has still got it. Just, just watch. First of all, just watch. He's got the little this. He's got a little of that going. And then that stroke. Look at that. I, I, I made my living for years covering that guy making those shots. And I posted this comment on an Instagram post where I saw this video yesterday. In his prime, Steve Kerr against Steph in a three-point shooting contest is a pickup. To me, it's a pickup. No, it, it is. And honestly, I don't know where that guy went to school, but he <laughs> must have got some of the best basketball oh, education he could have ever had. We got the Arizona that. guys sticking together over here. All, all kidding aside, people talk about Steph. And, and there's, there were things Steph could do that Steve Kerr couldn't even consider. Yeah. Yep. All the stuff he does off the dribble and all of that. But just catch and shoot in rhythm, or the way they do the three-point shooting contest where they're taking the balls out yep. of the racks, I'll take Steve Kerr over just about anyone I ever Here's saw. what I will say about Steve Kerr. People don't recognize this. The amount of pressure it takes when you don't have as many touches as Stephen Curry does with yeah. the ball. You're yeah. not allowed to play with the ball as much as Steph plays with the ball. And you're playing with a guy like MJ where the ball comes to you maybe once in the fourth quarter. Make that shot. This is That's this is, the pressure I'm talking about. That's so, where Steve Kerr is great. So knowing Steve, this is how he used to practice. He used to take a shot and then go sit down for a couple minutes. Then go stand back up and then have someone throw him one shot. Then go sit down for a couple of minutes. It wasn't something that you do all the time, but it's something that you kind of mentally prepare yourself to sit down for a few minutes, step into a game, and make a shot. Like, Great. he would actually do that mm -hmm. a part of his routine. You know, it is not inconceivable. When you start at the end of it all, and, and I'm not trying to compare him to the greatest players of all time or the greatest coaches of all time yeah. yet, but... He could get to a place pretty soon. When you start adding up championship rings that a guy has, there can be very few people who have more between him as a player, 
where oh, he won yeah. five, I believe, coach, and, and yeah. now well, all Pat these Riley. as a coach. Yeah, Pat well, Riley's and, an and Phil Jackson Phil obviously Jackson won all those, it. and he was part of two Nick teams that won championships as a player, and all those Celtics. But Steve Kerr is heading in that direction. Well, and then you look at his first, you know, five years of coaching, where right? like like he's in the record books as first to sixty wins, fastest to a hundred wins, fat. Like he is in the record books, and so for him to be in that kind of place, as you said, is like one of the great coaches. I don't think he's very far away. We always talk about the players and how they match up. We don't really talk about the coaches and how that matchup goes. Yeah. Nick wow. Nurse's first NBA Finals against a guy like Steve Kerr that's been there, done that multiple times. What Nick Nurse has on his side in this series is an entire nation. This is the first <laughs> time that Canada has been represented in the NBA Finals. Oh, and here to, Canada. Here, to speak on, uh, here to speak on behalf of that entire country to make his NBA Finals prediction is our Barry Melrose. Hey, Greeny, how you doing? Look, I know the Raptors are crazy in Canada, but I wanted to take it upon myself to do a little scouting job and find out what the Raptors are like in the Western Canada. My buddies, the guys I grew up with, guys from Humboldt, guys from Moose Jaw, guys from Medicine Hat, guys from uh, uh, Th Theodore, guys from Prince Albert. I wanted to know what they think about the Raptors. And you... Hey, Draker. You know what? They love the Raptors. All my buddies that love hockey love the Raptors, too. There's room for both those teams in Canada. I think that's great. I'm going to take the Raptors in six. Ooh, ooh. I love it. Okay, okay like Barry. It. And it's, that's well done by Leaves behind him. And by the way, it's no surprise he picked him in six, because as he says every year before the Stanley Cup, he always picks six. Mm. That's Barry Melrose. But it is an interesting little side note in this. There's an entire nation behind one I, team. In I just NBA want to go to T dot for game seven. That's oh, all I want. No, I, it's not going to make it that far. We all would like to, but it's not going to make it. I that also far. love the names of all of these towns in Canada. <laughs> anyway, the NBA <laughs> final starts tonight, 9 Eastern on ABC and on ESPN Deportes. The Warriors going for the three-peat. Raptors, as mentioned in their first ever finals. Our game one coverage tips off with NBA countdown at 830, and it can all be seen streaming live on the ESPN app, no matter where you may be.